No, Arif. Huh? We have a car to review today. Really? What car? The S70. S70? Isn't that an old Volvo? No, it's a Proton. Oh, Proton S70. All right, let's do it. Despite the rising popularity of SUVs, some of us with small families still prefer to use saloons as our first family car. And it can be a B, C or even a D segment saloon. Now we have a new option in the market and it is this, the Proton S70. This one right here is the flagship X which will cost you 94,800 ringgit. Let's see how good of a family car it is. First things first, let's address the B or C segment saloon argument. Personally, I would prefer to call it a B segment saloon, but long story short, it is a mixture of B and C segment saloon characteristics. In this video, I will go over all of them with you. Proton calls this a C segment saloon, but put it right next to a typical one, and it doesn't quite match up on the outside. Sure, the S70 is a pretty handsome looking car, but it doesn't seem to have the same amount of road presence as a C segment saloon. And I think that part of it is due to its wheelbase, which is closer to a B segment saloon. Put it right next to the average B segment saloon and the S70 looks right at home in terms of size and road presence. It's also one of the better looking cars when you compare it to this segment instead. It's also more fitting in terms of its price as the S70, even in its range topping form, doesn't cross the 100,000 ringgit mark. And if we continue comparing it to the average B segment saloon, the S70 does have a few special things like the 5 lux setup, the sunroof which is over the front only and the fancy light startup sequence. Overall, I think it's a good looking car, it means business, and I think that it looks classy. What isn't so classy on the S70 is this body kit, which I think is unnecessary, as the car looks good even without it. What bothers me a little bit is the rubber lining on the body kit, which could use some improvement. If you're particular about tyres, the S70 flagship X comes with a set of Goodyear Assurance Triple Max 2 tyres on a set of 17-inch wheels and just to put it out there, the Toyota Vios G gets a set of Continental Premium Contact C tyres, Honda City RS gets a set of Toyota Proxies R57 and the Nissan Almera gets a set of Continental Ultra Contact 6 tyres. Since we're on the topic of tyres, let's also talk about suspension. So this gets a McPherson strut suspension at the front and a torsion beam at the back, which is a typical setup for a B-segment saloon. If you want to compare it to C-segment saloons, so the Honda Civic gets a multi-link setup at the back, while the Toyota Corolla gets a double wishbone setup at the back. But it's not the only car with a torsion beam in the C-segment. The Mazda 3 also gets a torsion beam setup. This is what its key fob looks like and the last button right there is the remote start button. What could improve the user experience for the Proton S70 is that if it would have a keyless entry function for the front passenger door also, it would also be nice if it had a nearby auto unlock function for all doors. It does have a nearby auto unlock function but only for the trunk which we will address in a bit later. If we continue comparing the S70 to the average B segment saloon, it does have a few plus points. So the first thing is the driver's seat which gets electric adjustment. Sure, there's no memory function and the front passenger seat is manually adjustable but it is still a plus point over the average B segment saloon. Another plus point for the S70 would be the soft touch trims. So on the dashboard, on the middle part right here, there's a Songkit inspired trim. There's also soft touch on the top part of the dashboard. There's a bit more soft touch on the door panels, although the top part of the door is mainly hard plastics. But that's all right. I do appreciate the cabin of the S70, which doesn't get any fancy red trims or red stitchings. And mind you, this is the range topping flagship X. So I like it. I think just like the exterior, the S70 keeps it classy even on the inside. As for the cubby spaces, I do appreciate the large door bins for the first row where you can put some large water bottles. There's also a compartment to the right of the steering wheel which is able to fit the traditional smart tag. For a sub 100,000 ringgit car, I think that the center console of the S70 is pretty clever. So first things first, it gets this two-stage setup so you can put more stuff and then the armrest storage box is actually pretty big and it also gets a removable cup holder which kind of reminds me of that removable trash can 
in the Volvo C40. There's also a hook to the left-hand side of the center console. I also appreciate the fact that even with cups in the middle right here, the wireless mobile phone charger is still easily accessible. And since we're in this area, there's another storage space right here for more stuff and the glove box is moderately sized. Looking at this as a family car, I'd say that the cubby space for the second row could be a bit better. So I do like the rear door bin where you can put a small water bottle, some baby bottles and even squeeze in a fresh set of diapers. But it could be a bit bigger to accommodate larger adult water bottles. Another thing that could be improved is the pocket behind the front seat. So this could be a bit bigger. Right now it can fit a small umbrella but then there's not much space left for anything else. Now let's talk about the head unit of the Proton S70. Yes, it doesn't get Android Auto. Yes, it doesn't get Apple CarPlay. And you still have to use this QD Link app. But I'd say that for the price of the car, this is one of the better looking head units out there. It actually looks properly developed for the car and it has some pretty decent functions inside it. So one thing that you could appreciate is the 360 panorama view where you get this 3d view and you can turn your car transparent as well you can even swipe to view all around the car next thing is that you get a pretty decent navigation system which i think is pretty good at recognizing local pois even via voice recognition another great thing about the map is the fact that you can expand the map view in your instrument cluster which i think is a very useful feature what is also special about the S70's head unit is that a lot of the vehicle control functions can be done inside the screen. So things like your rear view mirror, your wipers, your door locks, your lights and even your sunroof are all done inside the screen. Now this may be cool but there are a bit of cons to it. Some of them will require extra steps which can usually be done with a touch of a button in some other cars. But still, you can overcome this with the voice command of the S70, which works like this. Hi Proton. Yes, I'm here. Take me to the nearest Proton service center. I couldn't find Proton City Center anywhere in 5 kilometers. Anyway, my point is that some controls are done inside the screen and this can be a bit bothersome. Things like your driving mode, comfort, eco and sport are all inside the screen. The instrument cluster brightness is also adjusted inside the screen. And what's a bit weird is that even the sunroof is controlled from inside the screen. So why this bothers me is that let's say you're driving home at night after a long trip with the family and your child is sleeping in the back seat, you park your car, you turn the engine off and this light will automatically turn on. And your instinct will tell you to press this button to turn it off, but it doesn't work. So what you'll have to do is start the engine again go back into the settings, find the door control light function, make sure your doors are closed and turn it off and then switch off the engine again. And that's how you turn off the light if you've forgotten to set that by default. And by this time, your child would have already woken up. It also could be better if this light had a warmer tone to it just to make it feel a bit more welcoming. This is a family car after all, right? So I did try to find a solution for this door light function and I did try to add it into one of the shortcuts in the head unit. But when I tried that, unfortunately, that is not one of the available functions that you can add into the shortcut menu. Continuing on the B or C segment saloon argument, I have the typical B and C segment saloon here for comparison and I have adjusted the driver's seat to my height and with that from the second row i could say that the s70 space is closer to that of a b segment saloon a c segment saloon would typically be able to give you about two inches more of legroom another thing that separates a b segment saloon from a c segment saloon is its boot space so i did try a bit of an experiment 
by fitting two large suitcases and one medium sized one into the S70 and I only managed to put one large suitcase and one medium sized suitcase as the cargo height of the S70 is a bit limited. I also tried to put it in another C segment saloon and you know what, it was pretty easy to put in two large suitcases and one medium sized suitcase. Even the boot could be closed quite easily. Surprisingly, two large suitcases and one medium sized suitcase can also fit quite snugly into the average B segment salute. So this really is just a matter of the cargo height of the Proton S70's boot space. Just needs a bit more depth to it so you can put your luggage in a vertical manner. A plus point for the S70's boot would be that it has a nearby auto unlock function. So you only have to stand behind it for about five seconds and the boot will open by itself. I think that it isn't very useful as you still need your hands to open the tailgate. Now let's go for a drive. So this makes 150 metric horsepower and 226 newton meters of torque, which is easily more powerful than the average B segment saloon. In fact, the performance figures of the Proton S70 are easily C segment saloon levels of performance. It is more powerful than the 1.8 liter Toyota Corolla, but a bit less powerful than the Honda Civic FE, which also has a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine, but with an extra cylinder. The S70 is fast for what it is, and just out of curiosity, we did do a bit of a drag race with the Honda Civic FE, and what happened was that if it's from a standstill or from a low speed, the Civic FE is easily the faster car. It does have more power, it does have more torque, but if you do a rolling start from say 80 kilometers an hour, you'd be surprised to find that the S70 and the Civic FE 1.5 Turbo are pretty much neck and neck. So I think that it makes the S70 value for money if performance is what you're looking for. You basically get C segment levels of performance for under 100,000 ringgit. And if you consider the fact that the engine, the 1.5 liter turbo MPI engine in the S70 is standard, so even the uh, executive variant S70 gets this same levels of performance at 74,000 ringgit, well then it is even more value for money. As for the driving experience of the Proton S70, I would say that it gives you a spirited driving experience. There is a decent amount of power from the 1.5 litre turbo MPI engine and uh, although it does sound a bit like a diesel, I'd give credit where it's due. The engine with the transmission is pretty alright, although it can be a bit too eager together with the accelerator pedal even during urban start-stop conditions. So if you're driving the S70 for the first time, you want to be very gentle with the accelerator pedal because push it a bit further and you might cause some unintended wheel spin. Another thing to complain about uh, the driving experience, well, would be the gear selector, which is a bit weird. You have to push forward twice to get into reverse. You have to pull uh, back twice to get into drive can be a bit tedious when you're doing a typical three-point turn and it also has this uh, weird side-to-side -side motion for the upshift and the downshift of the transmission. That aside, you know what, in terms of performance, you know, the basic stuff right here, um, it is uh, value for money. Like I said, you know, you're getting a lot of power for under 100,000 ringgit and you've seen the barrel video, you've seen this car uh, trashing the Vios and the City uh, in the drag race, so that's that. Now relating to performance, let's talk about handling. So Proton did compare the S70 to the Vios and the City in a drag race, so I guess it would be fair to compare its handling also to uh, B segment saloons. So I've driven the Toyota Vios and I'll just admit it, I quite enjoyed it. I felt that the lightweight and the grippiness of it all was just uh, super satisfactory. And I did get to drive the S70 during a media review uh, at the Proton Test Track, although for a brief session. And from that brief session, I quite liked it. So when Proton offered this car uh, for a full-on review, well, I kind of was looking forward to it. But having driven this car for uh, over 500 kilometers now, 
you know what? I think I was expecting a bit too much from the S70. Sure, the uh, engine performance is uh, remarkable for the price point of the car, but the handling is a bit softer. It is a bit loftier than I thought that it would be. But since I've driven the Vios, I quite liked it. Uh, you know, it was light. It was about 1,030 something kilograms. When I jumped into the S70 for this uh, test drive, uh, I was expecting similar levels, which isn't there, you know? And it's not a bad thing. Why? Because this is in fact, I guess, tuned for comfort. This is supposed to be a family car and it is comfortable, right? So it is a bit softer, it is a bit waftier, but a lot of the road undulations are absorbed just a little bit better as well. But just don't come in expecting some, uh, you know, uh, some fun little car to chuck around. Sure, it has a lot of power, but this is a bit on the softer side of things. There's a bit more roll to it. And a good explanation for the waftier and the softer ride of the S70, uh, besides the suspension tuning and the standard set of tires that it has, is its weight. So this S70 weighs a bit over 1,300 kilograms. And if you recall what I just said, the Vios weighs a bit over 1,030 kilograms. So this is 300 kilos heavier and that kind of answers one thing as well, which is what segment does this car belong to? So 1,300 kilograms is basically the weight of a C-segment saloon sedan. So the S70 is a C-segment saloon sedan if you judge it by its weight and by its performance figures. So as much as I would prefer to call it a B-segment saloon, and like I've said, it does have the space and practicality of a B-segment saloon in the second row seat and the boot, these two characteristics, performance and weight, uh, just make the S70 a C-segment saloon. Now let's talk about NVH. So if you've driven uh, some of the cars out there with Chinese DNA, you'd be surprised to find that they have pretty good levels of noise insulation. And the S70 is pretty much like that as well, although it's not the best. The doors aren't quite as thick of some of the cars out there, but compared to the typical uh, B-segment saloon, you know what? The NVH levels in the S70 is uh, one of the better ones out there. The loud or apparent noise inside here would be the engine at low speeds and the road noise from the tires. So that's pretty much it. Now, now let's address the ergonomics of the S70. So I have driven this for over 500 kilometers and I've treated it like your typical family car. So all the cubby spaces were filled to the brim and the second row seats were filled with passengers and there was a child seat as well. And you know what? The car was just filled with stuff and Treating it like a typical family car, I would say that I do appreciate the design of the cabin, the design of the cubby spaces, and just, you know, the, the seats and everything. What I mean by that is that I, as a driver, was pretty comfortable. I do like uh, the way the steering wheel feels, although it's a bit smaller. I do like the fact that there's a bit of a cushion on the door right here, although everything else is a hard plastic. I do quite like the position of the armrest as well. So as a driver, you know what? Uh, you are snug in here and these seats are pretty good too, right? They're pretty firm, although the uh, headrest has this uh, funny airy sound uh, when you squeeze it. That aside, you know what? It's a nice place to be in. It's comfortable. I can do long road trips. These cup holders were all full, but everything was still very useful. Uh, it's a nice family car, even if you could complain the fact that uh, second row seats are not as spacious as a typical C-segment saloon and the boot uh, isn't as big uh, as a typical C-segment saloon as well. Lastly, let's talk about the fuel consumption of the S70. So the official fuel consumption figures of the S70 only came out a bit later after its launch and it was reported to be 6.2 litres per 100 kilometres, at least on paper. The most interesting thing for me when I took this car for a test drive was that the computer was telling me that I could do about 730 kilometers on a single tank. So I had to try it myself. So what I managed to do is drive it from a full tank to an almost empty tank and I managed to do 523.7 kilometers 
and the computer told me that I still had 42 kilometers to go. So if I had a bit more patience, if I had a bit more time and courage, I could have done about 560 kilometers on a single tank. And that 523.7 kilometers was done with 43.669 liters of fuel or 89 ringgit and 52 cents with Ron 95. So what I managed to do was 12 kilometers per liter or 8.3 liters per 100 kilometers. But mind you, this was done with the typical Balai Kampung style driving where there's a lot of jams, there's a lot of idling, there's also the occasional acceleration to overtake. So I guess that if some of you out there had a bit more patience, a bit more time, you could achieve further distance than I did. I just did this out of curiosity. I hope you find this useful. So the S70 is a mixture of a B-segment saloon and a C-segment saloon. It has the power and weight of a C-segment saloon, but its practicality is borderline B-segment saloon. Do I like it? I do. I just wish that it had a bigger boot space. For more information on the Proton S70, head on to autobuzz.my. If you like this video, give it a like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also remember to turn on notifications. If you didn't, please let us know why. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.